We have arrived, folks. Issue number four of The Last Jedi comic adaptation. Let's just take a moment of silence to honor the cover art on this one. <sighs> All right, that was refreshing. So this comic starts with the feud between Rey and Luke. They have their back and forth with Luke essentially kind of just toying with Rey and he's knocking away her strikes. He's not interested in fighting. I do like the uh, summoning of the prod to Luke's hand. It's like the homage to Hoth when Luke grabs his saber out of the snow. But other than all of this, it's pretty much just playing out the exact same way structurally as the film. I also really do like the image of Rey here against the rain. So after Luke kind of trips and falls during this little feud, Luke goes on to tell Rey what really happened between himself and Ben, and he explains that only a fleeting moment of the idea of killing Ben passed over him, and it seemed like the best option to maintain balance in the Force. Ever since I saw The Last Jedi, I have come to this sort of fan conclusion that Luke learned the power of reading minds from Snoke, and this is my ego super headcanon hat on right now. And the novel, it pretty much mentions that Luke met Snoke and in The Force Awakens, we see Kylo using the mind read as his primary technique. And in The Last Jedi, we see Snoke and Luke using this power. Seems really coincidental that the three of them happen to be the only people that do this. So this is what I think. Anyways, this is just my dumb little fan theory and most likely it is not true. So after the retelling of the story in the Rashomon style, Rey departs knowing that Luke can't help her the way that she needs, but we get to peer once again into Luke's mind with a passage reflecting on the fact that he's seen this scenario once before. Disobeying his own master and going to fight a darkness he believed he could turn. I like this little addition to the comic. Now for the reason I love this issue the most so far, Yoda in the Force Tree. The art of Yoda in here is fucking awesome. We also learn that Luke has ventured to the tree to burn it down many times, only to succumb to hesitation as he says. Yoda shows up just like in the film, but fortunately he does get some more lines. Yoda really has zero interest in stopping Luke's will in any manner. This puzzles Luke into questioning why Yoda would even be there, and as this happens, the tree explodes after a lightning strike destroys it. Force Ghost Yoda has some epic Muppet powers in The Last Jedi, and I don't care what anybody says, I love this super powered Force Ghost. It raises a lot of questions for me in a really good way. Yoda lets Luke know that he needs to move beyond the Jedi books, also known as his self-imposed limitations. He teaches Luke that even failure is part of mastery, and the ability to pass on what has been learned about failure is one of the most important things a master can teach a Padawan. And then Yoda speaks my favorite line, Luke, we are what they grow beyond. That is the true burden of all masters. This will forever be my favorite quote from Yoda. We end up back on the stolen ship that DJ took and he gives his lesson to Finn about there not really being this binary of good and evil. Essentially, people double dip on their weapons manufacturing. This revelation in the film was interesting. I definitely wondered to myself how the Empire and First Order could afford to build their military force, but now we know. War profiteering. And I've also really liked uh, DJ's line, the live free don't join. We're then back with the Resistance fleet, and Poe comes after Haldo for uh, essentially remaining silent with her plan of attack against the First Order. The line from Poe, what the hell did Leia see in you, is great. I don't think this was in the film, uh, if I'm wrong, 50 lashings, but I think uh, this adds more tension between them, and I found it lacking a little in the film. Back on the Millennium Falcon, Rey gets into essentially what I think is an analog to Padme's deathbed, and goes to meet up with Kylo. I love that we still don't get to know what Chewie says to Rey about if he sees Finn. Also, seeing this spelled out, like what Chewie is saying, is hilarious to me. One odd thing is the uh, TIE Fighter calling Kylo his lord. Also, you can really see the swollenness in this one. Yeah. The entry onto Snoke's ship as well as the mutiny against Haldo plays out the exact same as it does in the film. One tiny thing I like in this comic is the uh, cell of BB-9E. I'm a sucker for astromech. When the Resistance fleet is leaving after Leia awakens from her coma, there is a moment between Haldo and Leia before they depart. Leia knows Haldo means to sacrifice her life for the cause, and I sort of wish that we got this kind of farewell interaction in the film. There's like no stumbling over the line, may the force be with you. I just like that here it's a little bit more hammered home and it's really impactful. And I also do like the silhouette cell here of uh, 
Leanne Haldo. I don't remember if they shot a master like this in the film off the top of my head right now. I should know this because I've seen this movie like nine times. But yeah, I don't think they actually had a wide master shot like this. And this actually could have played out very beautifully. On the elevator going to Snoke's chambers, we go over all the possible futures that both Rey and Kylo saw when they touched hands. The wills of the Force are a play, and in a sense, we all know that what they say to each other is true. But I loved when Kylo just kind of throws a dagger right at Rey before she goes before Snoke, telling Rey, I've seen your parents. He saw the one thing that she's essentially hiding from, as we kind of come to learn. And retrospectively, it makes sense when we see that look of shock on Rey's face. So yeah, I, I do like this little moment here. The comic does end with Snoke complimenting Kylo on bringing Rey before him. The art of Snoke is great, if you ask me. It kind of reminds me of Freddy Krueger from Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, which is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. And, and maybe that's why I love Snoke in this image. It's just so creepy. Overall, I would highly recommend buying this comic. I'm going to literally frame this and put it on my wall. It's really one of the most beautiful scenes from the film and, and the comic art is just honestly just something I want to stare at. So this concludes my review and thoughts on issue 4 of The Last Jedi, AT-AT signing off.